God says in the book of Malachi, He says, I am the Lord that changeth now. The word tells us heaven and earth will pass away, but not one jot or tittle of my word shall pass away. God has put His word above His name. He did not change it in the heavens for the angels to rebel against Him. He did not change it for Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden. He did not change it for Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane. And certainly today and forever, He will not change His word. For whatever He has said, He's going to bring it to pass. I greet you one more time in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Welcome to the program, The Unchangeable God. Today I want to continue on the topic, Pleasing God, Our Father. I want to remind you the last time, that last session that I did, I talk about if you want to please God, the first thing that you must do is to become a son of God. That's why the Bible tells us that Jesus, God spoke from the heaven and said about His Son, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Unless you don't become a son or join into the family of God, you can never please God. To do that, you must be born again, born after the Spirit of God. Now, I want you to learn more of this. So if you would just join with me or call someone, I'm going to uh, share this program, share this on the air. And I want you to be blessed because God has something in store for you. God bless you as you listen to this session. I want to read from John chapter 8, verse 29. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always the things that pleased him. I want to read that one more time. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always the things that pleased him. Pleasing God the Father is what I want to continue on. I believe in my heart that God is a pleasable being. Amen. It is possible for fallen man to please God and can be done through God's beloved son. His name is Jesus Christ, Amen. who is the only one which every human being, I believe, should be following. Jesus is the only model example whom we should follow and learn from him how we can please God the Father. He received the approval on the day of his baptism when he was coming out of the water. The heavens were opened and the Spirit of God descended upon him like a dove. And the Father spoke and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus as a Son never offended the Father in anything. Never displeased his father. He said, for I always do, always do the things that pleased him. Not mere talk about it or pray about it, but it is about always doing that which the father told him to do. Amen. I believe this should be our desire. This should be every believer desire. I believe this should be every human desire that you must find out. You must find out how to please God. Not only that, we should be pleasing God at all times, whether in the home or whether in our workplace or whether we are playing or in rest time, we must always please God. It is very important to understand that. When we choose to please God, we will have the assurance that His presence is with us, that we are not alone, that He is with us to support us, to give us victory in conflict, and to guide us and prosper us in every area of our lives. We can be assured that we will have His divine favor and we, we can have His divine power when we please God Almighty. Jesus said, my father have not left me alone because I always do what pleases him. God will never leave us alone. 
when our lives are pleasing to him, he will not absolutely leave us alone because he promised us and Jesus himself promised his children. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, but I will be with you until the end of the age. When people reject you and every society rejects you, when your father and mother rejects you and leaves you alone or forsake you, he promised you that. He's telling the truth. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you but I will be with you if you really have the desire in your heart to please almighty God then you must find out what please him and also what displease our father and I pray that the end of it all that you would make a decision the right decision that is that I want to please God and I want to have his approval and I want him to acknowledge me as a child of God if you really want to do that then find out exactly what please God and what doesn't please God the Bible tells us that my people are destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. Not that there is no knowledge, there is knowledge, but it's because people literally reject knowledge. They just don't want to find out more about God, what pleases God, and what doesn't please God. It is a wise thing that I believe that you should find, get knowledge from Almighty God of the things that God hates and the things that he delights in. And you're going to find it all in the scripture, the word of God, which is quick and powerful and sharper than any two of the soul. Amen. In the book of Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 to 19, the Bible tells us these six things the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. God hates a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that defies it wicked imagination, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that, that speak lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren, which is the seventh, is an abomination to the Lord. But we go on in Romans chapter 8, the Bible continues to tell, tells us, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please Almighty God. They that are in the flesh cannot please Almighty God. You may ask the question, what is the flesh he's talking about? Well, certainly it is not the human flesh the Bible is referring to here in the scripture. The flesh he is referring to is the carnal mind or the carnal desires of, the, of humans. It is produced from the sinful nature or the corrupt nature which we inherited from the first man, Adam. We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. He's talking about the carnal nature. Flesh is a carnal way of, of thinking and resides in our hearts. That's the flesh. It is a state of being unregenerated or a person who sins and not pardoned. It is a person not being in Christ Jesus. That's what the flesh is all about. When we live in the flesh, we are under the power and dominion of sin. As long as we are living in the flesh, ruled by the corrupt nature and therefore condemned. That's what the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8 verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the, the, the flesh, but after the spirit. So immediately the Bible makes it very clear that you must be in Christ Jesus and you must walk in the Holy Ghost and not fulfill the desires of the flesh and so you will not be condemned if you're doing that as long as you're walking in the flesh, living under the dictates and dominion of the flesh, you're living in sin and as a result of that you are condemned. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17, he said therefore if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature, all things are passed away and behold all things become new. Therefore if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature, all things are passed away and behold all things become new. 
When a person receives Jesus in his heart and his sins are forgiven, he becomes a new person, a new person. He's now united with Jesus, now intimate with him. He has become one with him and begin to become like him. He's a new man that receives a new nature, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness in comparison to the old nature which you're born with, you're created in unrighteousness and unholiness as long as we are walking and living according to dictates of the old nature then we are condemned and God is not with us we do not belong to the family of God and the end result is death for the Bible tells us the wages of sin is death and if you die in your sin with that particular nature the old corrupt nature then you'll be eternally separated from God and living in the pits of hell forever and ever where the hell the bible tells us hell was not created for us as human beings but it was created for satan and all the rebel angels in heaven you don't be you cannot you should not be condemned or don't walk in condemnation if you would only make the decision to be in christ jesus and receive the holy spirit in your life There must be repentance. Repentance is a change of mind, a change of thinking, a change of heart from sin to live a righteous life, which is only possible when the heart is renewed by receiving Jesus in your life and quickened by the Holy Spirit because we were dead in trespasses and sin. But now the Holy Ghost quickens us and make our spirit alive to become new in God as a new man. A change will commence at the new birth when we receive the Holy Spirit and Jesus in our life and is progressive until Christ is formed in us until his very image you begin to see in us as we present the image of God and walking and living according to the word of God that is that God has given to us this is the reason why Jesus told Nicodemus he said you must be born again or born of the Holy Ghost uh, to enter the kingdom of God that which is born Born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. We are born of Adam, and of course we are the offspring of Adam, but now we are born. God requires us to be born of the Holy Ghost, and that which is born of the Holy Ghost, you're born of the Spirit, and that is the thing that gives you the right, the legal right to be a child of God, a son of God, and as a result of that, you can now have legitimate rights to all the promises of Almighty God. Now, how do I know that I'm living according to the flesh? And the question that you may ask, Galatians 5, chapter, Galatians 5, 19 to 21 says, now the works of the flesh are manifested. This is what's going to be seen when you're walking in the flesh, which are these adultery and fornication and uncleanliness and lasciviousness and idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like are thee which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they that do such, uh, such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And that's how we know that we are walking in the flesh and we are not going to please God when we do that. In what sense living in the flesh cannot please God, you may ask. In what sense living in the flesh? Well, a man who lives after the flesh is not a humble person. A man who lives after the flesh is not a humble or penitent person, therefore unacceptable to God because the flesh will not submit to the things of God, will not submit to God as long as you're operating in the flesh. So there's a direct opposition between you and God and a fight between you and God. So a man living in the flesh in this sense is not humbled or penitent and as a result is unacceptable to Almighty God. They are not believers of Jesus and and the true living God. And as a believer, you cannot please God. As an unbeliever, you cannot please Almighty God. You have to become a believer to please Almighty God. 
in what sense we are talking about living in the flesh that cannot please God, the carnal mind, like I just said, or the flesh opposes God's law and will not subject to it. And God is not pleased when, when we do, when God is pleased when we do His will and His word. He's not pleased when we, when we, we are doing, when, when you're not doing God's will or walking in His purpose. In what sense living in the flesh cannot please God? All works, all good services, all religious service that a man may render unto God in the flesh is not acceptable to Almighty God because it is not done according to God's way. You can do all the good things. That's why people can do all the good things that you want to do and uh, all the good works and good works cannot save anybody. And you can be genuine in your heart, but under the principles of God, it is still unacceptable in the sight of God, even though you may think that what you're rendering, that you're good in the sight of God, but the Bible tells us there is none that is good. There is none that is righteous. There is none that do it good. And so whatever you're offering to God, whether good works or services, is still unacceptable unto God unless you come uh, to Almighty God, be born of the Spirit uh, and walk in the way that God would have you to and that's when you're going to please Almighty God. In what sense we're talking about living in the flesh, they have, they cannot have their prayer answered. An unbeliever cannot have, have his prayer answered because God doesn't listen to sinners except for repentance. The word of God tells us that if I regard iniquity in my heart, God will not listen to us. So if we are in the flesh and we're walking in sin, there is nobody good and there is nobody that is righteous, then all that we are offering, all that we are doing, certainly if we come into God religiously and praying to God and offering in a ceremonial way, God will not listen to us because it is our sin that separates us from God. And so God will not listen to us except that we come to the place of repentance and say, God, I acknowledge my sin. I'm sorry for my sin. I receive Jesus in my life. And of course, I believe in his name and you shall be saved. Amen. We must understand you can only have access to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So if a man doesn't accept Jesus in his life, then certainly he will not, he will not have access to the Father. So how are we going to pray? If we are praying, you can only reach to the Father through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Jesus said that. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man come unto the Father but my me. So in no way that people can come to God Almighty or enter into his presence except then through the beloved Son of God, Jesus Christ, the Lord, the, the, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. He said, I am the door of the sheep. You must be a sheep of his pasture before you enter. So you must become a sheep. You must become a son. You must become a child of God. When you accept Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost in your life, this is exactly what is going to happen. You're going to please Almighty God. You can sing religious songs how much you want and hymns and worship the Lord. If you're doing it in the flesh, then it's not pleasing to Almighty God. You're doing it without the Holy Spirit. And if you're doing it without the Holy Spirit, you're doing it in the flesh. And that is not pleasing to Almighty God because the Bible tells us God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if you're walking in the flesh, then you cannot worship God to the standard that is required because he he is God, he is a spirit, and he required us that we must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Even giving arms in the flesh is not acceptable to Almighty God because it's not, it's not done in the right principle and the right attitude, so we cannot please God. Even giving our arms in the flesh, or religiously speaking, God, that is unacceptable in the sight of God. When I look at Genesis chapter 4, we are talking about Cain and, Cain and Abel. And I just want to read from Genesis chapter 4 and verse, from verse 1. The Bible tells us, And Adam knew his wife, and she was she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she, bare, and she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time it came to pass, that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. 
And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wrought, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wrought, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. If thou doest not well, then sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with, with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. If you do what is pleasing to me, God is saying in, in, in the verse, if you do what is pleasing to me, then I will accept you and I will accept your offering. Understand this and put this into your spirit forever. This is the word of the Lord. First the person, then the gift is God's order. First the person, then the gift is God's order. I want to say that one more time so you can sink into your spirit. First the, the person, then the gift is God's order. In other words, God accepts you first before he accepts your gift or your offering. If you do well according to my word, then I will accept you and your gifts or offerings. If you do not do well, it is because you're coming to me in the flesh, the less or, or the standard that is not required to please me, and giving me an offering that is not with the right heart, not according to my, uh, my standard, is certainly unacceptable. The reason why, because I am God and I change it not, my character change it not, and I, I am I'm the holy God, the holy only one of Israel, therefore you must come up to the standard. Therefore, I am not pleased with when you come in the flesh to offer me your gifts and even yourself, it is unacceptable. The Pharisees give tithes and offerings, but their, but their life was not pleasing to Almighty God because all they were doing, they were doing it to please themselves and to please men to get the glory for themselves. I want you to understand this, that God, uh, God doesn't share his glory with no one. No one ought to take the glory that comes from God. I remember King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and many of you would, would bear witness to it with that. He, he stood on the porch at one time and he decided, to declare, he said, isn't this great Babylon that I have built with my own hands? In other words, he was taking the glory for himself and as a result of that, uh, your voice came immediately and said, uh, ah, the kingdom is taken away from you. Even at this moment, and the meats and the poison took the kingdom away from him because he gave not God the glory and he had to go down for seven years like an animal, to think like an animal, eat grass until finally the Bible tells he come to his senses and understand that there's a great God of glory who give kingdom to who he wants, take down from who he wants, and put up to who he wants because he is God and he prays almighty God for it. We cannot take the glory for ourselves. I remember King Herod stood on that day and gave an oratory or a powerful speech and the people began to say, oh, this is the voice of God. This is not the voice of a man. He took the glory for himself and as a result of that, as he took the glory for himself, he was struck down with a sickness that worms eat him up until he died. You cannot take the glory that comes from God or that belongs to God all glory belong to Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. If you look at Jesus, if you look at Jesus, if you, if you have his mind or think like him, you remember in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 to 11, he says let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus we are to think like him, who being in the form of God, taught in that robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant he humbled himself he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death on the cross, because of that humility that Jesus, even though that he was God, never taught a robbery to be equal with God. In other words, he humbled himself, left his divine power, left his divine glory, became a man.
man and humbled himself and because he humbled himself and obey ex and do always that God the Father would tell him to do. The Bible tells us that God did not bring him down but the Bible tells us wherefore God had highly exalted and given us a name which is above every name and the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven of things on the earth and things under the earth and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings we give God the glory because of that name and Jesus earned that, uh, that power and earned that name because of his humility when humility is God is going to exalt you where pride is is going to come down you not you cannot exalt yourself when you have pride God is going to bring you down Jesus called the religious people of his day, he says, you hypocrites, because they tell others to do right, to tell others to do follow the scripture, but they themselves do not do that which is right. They went about establishing their own righteousness, uh, their own righteousness. These are religious people who would go about to establish their own righteousness. We, we are not righteous. There is no righteousness in us. All human beings born from Adam are not righteous. Uh, they are the, our righteousness or all of our righteousness they are like filthy rags we can only be righteous because of Jesus' righteousness that he imputed in us and so we can declare ourselves and boast that we are righteous on because of Jesus' righteousness that he imputed into our lives Hallelujah. when our lives are pleasing to God then we accept it and so with our tithes and offering and our prayer. I want to say that one more time again. When our lives are pleasing to God, then we are accepted and so too with our tithes and offerings and our prayer. When we come to God Almighty or present ourselves to God, it must be as a living sacrifice. And the scripture tells us that. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2, it Paul says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You must understand that, that if you come into God in the flesh with a corrupt, sinful nature, you can never, ever present Present your bodies before God as a living sacrifice. If we are coming to God in the flesh, then we are presenting to God a dead sacrifice, unacceptable to the Lord. It will never be holy. It will never be righteous. It will still be sinful and unacceptable. So you remember this now. Paul is saying, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present when you're coming to God, you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, a life in the Spirit, quickened by the Holy Ghost, a life in Jesus. Jesus, not a life in the flesh, because if you're coming there religiously in the flesh, then it is unacceptable to God, because it is unholy and unacceptable to God, because God is holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, the cherubim from the seraphim, they cry, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. You've listened to this broadcast of this message of pleasing God. If the Holy Spirit is talking to you now, that you want to please God, then you can do it now. You can become a new person by accepting Jesus Christ in your life and the Holy Ghost is going to come into your life and quicken your spirit and now you can come into union and intimacy and live in the presence of God forever. For all those who are believers, I want you to keep your testimony. The testimony that is, continue to please Almighty God. That your lights will shine among men. That they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Encourage you believers. Don't give up your testimony. Because if you want to make it when Jesus comes, you must have a testimony like Enoch that you must please Almighty God. If you want to please Almighty God, you want Jesus in your life, I want you to say this prayer after me. Everywhere those who listen to me. Father, I heard your word today. And I received Jesus in my life. I want to walk in the Spirit. Let your Holy Ghost touch me now. Quicken me and, and, and bring into conviction, Lord, and satisfy my conscience that I'm a child of God. That when you come, Lord, I'm going to go with you. From now on, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I want to live a life that is pleasing to you. God bless you. See you next time.